Right, okay, welcome back to Buna Vista Golf Club out here in Tenerife. Uh, the average golfer is uh, doing plenty of product testing. We'll do plenty of filming from this golf course in the next few days, plenty to come. It's G4 10 week from Ping. I've got the hybrid, I've got the fairway wood. What's different about the G4 10 range? And uh, that's what we need to find out out here on the course. Got some dry ball data. But let's see what Ping says different about it. And uh, it's a quick flick back over to the UK to listen to some tech specs. Right, well, we're not gonna go too much into the spec in terms of what Ping is saying, because as I know, you are all interested in performance. But very, very briefly, what Ping are looking at here again is lowering and the positioning of the CG is very interesting uh, on this G410 fairway. So you can see from the diagram again there, CG is positioned close to the face and sole. And again, the idea is to deliver uh, more energy, higher ball speed and maximum forgiveness. It's just a repeated message that we hear from every manufacturer, to be honest with you. Um, it's once again, it's a forged face. It's available in a three, a five, a seven and a nine wood. And then you've got this tungsten weight placed right at the very back, uh, which once again, uh, right deep back in the head, uh, close to the perimeter for that increased MOI and once again plenty of adjustability. Right okay so the tech into the uh, G410 hybrid not a great deal to look at to be quite honest with you and all the message that messages that we'd expect to see from a manufacturer. This again this Amaragin steel face is twinned with um, a, a stainless steel head. It is a bigger Profile six and a half percent bigger than the G400, the last uh, hybrid they brought out in this range. Um, once again, tungsten weighting right at the very back of the perimeter uh, to help with uh, forgiveness. Not a lot more to say, really. Plenty of adjustability uh, to choose a setting that suits. Um, yeah. I don't think we need to say a great deal more about this one. I think it's all about performance and how it fares in the hands of the average golfer. And to do that, we get back out of Teoplo Towers and get back out there, hopefully in the sunshine, over to Tenerife. Right, so you've heard the tech specs. Uh, I'm gonna give you my opinion on what these things look like behind the ball. And I think from the bottom line, it's pretty much the same as the driver. I think Ping have done a stunning job in terms of aesthetics. These sit on the shelf and for me, they look absolutely superb. And again, I said it with the driver perhaps, two of the best models that have come again out from Ping from what I've seen. Um, top line again, just turn those over behind the ball. I'm not a fan of turbulators for a lot of people. Uh, they won't make any difference to, to you. And I've ended up gaming the G400 Max because I like the performance of the club, but I would much prefer if they weren't there. But obviously Ping think they are there to aid performance. So I'll have to leave it at that, I'm afraid. Uh, now, enough said, we've got tech spec, you've got my opinion on what they look like. It's time to get hitting some golf balls, I think. Right, quick update, quite a good few shots in now, both with hybrid and uh, with the three wood. Let's start with the negative, I suppose. Should start with the positive. Let's start with the negative. I'm not overly keen on the face on these clubs in the sense that they both have a very hard feel, um, which was in the driver and I feel is probably in the irons. It's a big negative for me, I'm afraid, with all this range. So let's get that one out of the way. However, there's a very much a positive side on this as well. The flip side is performance has been excellent. Um, again, strike is always going to vary and maybe that's down to the quality of the swing that I've put on these, but I've found a lot of fairways, uh, not a lot of deviation in terms of ball movement, although when I've asked it to cut, which I did on that last shot, it's done exactly, that was a three wood, uh, when, it's, when I've asked to put a bit of a cut on it, I did exactly that, so I was able to shape the shot as well. They're very shallow in the face, both of these as well. And, but I like that, again, I'm not sure everybody will, but it's a very shallow face. I love the way it sits behind the ball. Um, and for me, uh, really performing very, very well with that just that one negative at the moment being the sound which obviously resonates in feel. Anyway, I'll carry on and uh, at some point we'll get into a summary.
Right, that is us finished on the fairway woods and hybrids out here on the course. I've got to say, they perform very, very well indeed, both of them. Um, three wood, I'm going to throw out dry ball data for both clubs. We'll start with three wood. It wasn't the longest three wood I've ever played, and that bore out on the course as well. In some uh, aspects, the hybrid was almost as long as it in some instances that I hit from the tee. The hybrid numbers uh, are up on screen now. Again, sort of 195 carry distances with a good spin number perfect for coming into long par threes or into the uh, long par fours as well. Both very gameable products, both forgiving. I think the kind of nuances that you'll have to be, uh, you'll have to like is the shallow face. You'll also have to like that sound and feel, which I found just that little bit too hard for me. I didn't really get a lot of responsiveness back in the hands, but performance wise, very, very good indeed, particularly out on the course, which is where it all matters. So for me, both products are thumbs up, well worth giving a try if you're in the market for fairway wood or for hybrid this year. That's me done, I think. Comments down below. I'm going to carry on playing this Buena Vista Golf Club. And next up, it'll be the um, 410 Irons from Ping. Let's see how we get on with them.